All right, Mormon fans, Skyler's here. Today we're going to talk about you won't love it unless you live it. So there's a little tagline that I was had come to my mind the other day, and it's true. I was thinking about a lot of people that don't like the LDS Church or don't like um, certain aspects of it, and even at times in my own life when I haven't enjoyed going to church, and I've kind of come down to the understanding that it's because I wasn't living it at the time, or the people that don't like it, it's because they're not living it, or they don't want to live a certain principle. And so tonight we we had a great a great night of finding. We went out and talked to a lot of different people in our neighborhood about the church, talked to them about the gospel, about Jesus Christ, and I wore my, my Christmas tie even though it's August. Felt like the right thing to do. It was a good, good time. Never, never too early to celebrate Christmas. Um, and we talked to one gentleman in particular that um, he got baptized when he was 15 years old and it seemed like he had been very, very active for a long time and only recently had he stopped going to church. And so when we talked to him about kind of what, about coming back to church, he, he had a little bit of a, a tear up in his eye. Um, and really felt that it was something that he wanted to do, but there was some sort of barrier. And so we're going to go, um, we're going to go back and talk with him and and help him on his journey from whatever he allows us. But really, the the journey comes down to an individual relationship with God. So if you are struggling, um, whether you're Mormon or non-Mormon, but if you're struggling with life, with problems, or with um, you know, yeah, I guess just anything. What really comes down to is your relationship with God. And if you pray, if you have a real intent, faith in Christ, sincere heart, if you have all those things, God will direct you. And if you listen, he will guide you to find the greatest happiness and the most joy. And a lot of times he tells you to do things you don't want to do. He'll tell you to do things that, um, or he'll invite you rather, he'll invite you to make changes in your life that bring you closer to him. Some of those changes are uncomfortable for you, um, but you won't love it unless you live it. And so um, if you ever feel guilty while going to the church, usually that's because the Spirit's telling you, hey, you need to, you need to shape up, you need to change this here, because God wants us to be happy, and, and he'll tell us to do the things that make us the most happy. And just I don't know, similar to my... My 11-month-old son, when he climbs up on the banister of the stairs, I hurry and pull him down because I don't want him to fall down the stairs. But he doesn't like that at all. He, or maybe I, I tell him, no, you can't eat a whole bucket of ice cream. He doesn't like that at all. And similar, God, he tells us things that we can't do, and sometimes we don't like it because... We don't have the same understanding that he does. God understands that there are dangers that we might not perceive or that there are things that might hurt us that we don't even see. And so the easiest thing to do is just to listen. Um, my intelligence isn't anywhere near God's, and but I have experienced a lot more than what my son has experienced. So I would invite you to, to seek knowledge from the source of all knowledge, which is God. Pray and ask him for guidance and direction in your life, and he will give it to you. And I leave that with you. In his name, even Jesus Christ. Amen.